Hi everyone, so this is my customizable female base mesh. It allows you to create your own character base mesh using sliders and different customization options, and from here you could start sculpting, retexturing, and designing your own characters. I designed it for character creation, and you can see it in practice in my Medusa video, but it's set up with Blender's Rigify rig, so you could also use it for animation, but that's not its intended purpose. The main reason I made this is that I wanted to have a customizable character that already had nice topology and was ready to texture to make my character creation process easier. This saves me so much time so that I don't have to retopologize a body every time I make a character. Just a disclaimer, this character rig is not really beginner friendly. You have to know the basics of Blender and also understand how Blender's rigging works. If you're a beginner, this won't solve all your character modeling problems, you'll still need to know the basics. But with that out of the way, let's walk through the features. When you open the Blender file, you'll see the character, and it has its own Rigify rig, and also two custom menus above it. We'll start off with the easy way of modifying the face, and that's just with the sliders. If we select the menus and enter Pose Mode, we can now select any of the sliders and move them with G. The left menu controls different parts of the face, and the right menu controls the body. All of the body sliders are fairly self-explanatory. Moving them to the left will make the character skinnier, and moving them to the right will make it bigger. If you shift-click all of the green sliders, you can control the overall size of the character, and then tweak it afterwards. The bottom slider controls how muscular the character is, so even turning this up a small amount can give the character some definition. The left menu controls parts of the face, and again, they're all fairly self-explanatory. The only different one is the bottom ears control, which will change the shape of the ears to some different ear styles. I'm going to reset everything by clearing the location of the bones by selecting everything and pressing Alt-G. This will reset the location. You can also reset the rotation and scale with Alt-Or and Alt-S. This will be useful later when using the main rig. Now if we select the face menu itself, you should see a new menu appear in the properties panel. All of these sliders are linked to shape keys, and these will give you some more options for the face. You can change the shape of the eyes with the eyes controls, and if you want, you can blend them together to get whatever eye shape you like. You can also turn up the different face sliders, and these are all preset faces that I've made, but I'll be adding more in the future. They're all based on popular characters, but you can mix and match different amounts of each face by playing with the sliders, so you have a lot of options. If you want a quick way of resetting the sliders, you can hover over them and press backspace, and this will reset them all to the default values. Now onto the Rigify rig, where we can use the Rigify controls to further customize the character. The Rigify controls allow you to animate expressive characters by moving different parts of the face to exaggerate them, but we can use those controls to create a custom base mesh, and it also has the benefit of allowing us to animate later if we want. In your scene, you should see the Rigify rig, which is a bunch of different shapes surrounding the character. If you don't see anything, you can select the Rigify rig from the outliner on the right, and then enter pose mode. The rig is broken up into different sections, and sometimes you might hide all of them, so you may have to select the rig from the outliner if you can't see anything. When you enter pose mode, you should see a section called Rig Layers in the Properties panel, and these control the visibility of the different bone collections, but you can also change their visibility from the Armature section of the Properties window. Selecting things from this menu will toggle on or off the visibility of the different sections. You can also click and drag over these buttons to activate them. This works for the buttons and also the eye icons in the Bone Collections menu. If you don't see the menu, you can open the Scripting tab, and at the top of the window, you can press the little text box icon and select RigUI.py. This is a custom Python script which creates the menu for you, so you can just press the Play icon and it will run the script. Now you can go back to the Layout tab. With the menu set up, we can start moving things around. Using the menus, I always start off with the face controls first, then go to primary and secondary. These different collections give you more detailed controls over the face, but they can get overwhelming, so start off with the big stuff first. So with only the face controls on, we can see some shapes, and the easiest way to figure out what they do is to just play around with them. Click on any of them and try moving it, rotating it, and scaling it. Most of them are basic controls that move the part of the face where the control is, but some of them are special, like the ellipse around the mouth. Scaling this will open the mouth for us, but keep the teeth clenched. And if you want, you can just scale it on the Z-axis to move the lips up and down. Some of the controls also have extra properties assigned to them, like the jaw. If we select the jaw control, a new option will appear in the menu called Mouth Lock. So if we open the mouth by rotating the jaw on the X-axis, turning up the Mouth Lock property will close the mouth and allow us to move the jaw with the mouth closed. All of this extra stuff is built into Rigify, and I'm not an expert by any means, so you can look up some dedicated Rigify tutorials to learn more about how it works. So after moving and rotating some of the face controls, let's move on to the primary controls. These controls allow us to change the character's eyebrows, eyes, nose, and mouth. Each of these controls moves a certain part of the face, and some of them are linked together, so just play around with them. 
Lastly, you have the secondary controls, which allow you to push and pull all of the in-between parts of the face, like the eyelids, the bridge of the nose, the cheeks, and ears. All of the secondary controls can be useful for really fine-tuning a character before starting to sculpt or animate. And remember, you can always reset the face to its default by selecting everything and pressing Alt, G, or, and S. Just make sure that each section is visible when you're resetting. You can't reset the position of bones that are hidden. Now we can move on to the body controls. We can enable the torso, the two arm controls, and the two leg controls. You can disable the face controls if you like to keep things neat. By default, the arms and legs use IK controls, meaning we only need to move the hands and feet of the character to pose the body. The hand controls are located on the hands, and if you move these, again with the G, you'll see the elbows bend. To rotate the elbows, you can select the arrows on the upper arms and rotate them. If you double tap OR, you can rotate freely, and sometimes this helps with rotating them correctly. To make a character sit, you can grab the hands and yellow box around the hips and move them downwards. You can then move them back on the Y axis to form the angle of the legs. And now we can just rotate the arrows on the legs to bring the knees together. By default, the X axis mirror is enabled, which is why all of the movement is mirrored, but we can disable this in the top right corner and then you can make asymmetrical poses. As you can see with all of the body and face controls enabled, the rig can get pretty confusing, so I would just enable one or two sections at a time so that it's not too overwhelming. During the character creation process, you'll probably want to use the sliders and the rig at the same time, but they're separate objects, so the way to do it is in object mode, select both the rig and the menu, and then enter pose mode. This will enter pose mode for everything, allowing you to move the rig and the sliders at the same time. To make the character taller or smaller, we can get creative with the rig controls. I'm going to grab the hips and hands and move them down, which will bend the knees. However, if we scale the arrows around the legs, it will straighten them out. The legs will keep their size, so they might be too big or small, but you can use the customization menus to fix that. Now we can do the same thing for the arms. Move the hands a bit closer to the body and scale down the upper arm bones. This will straighten the elbows. You can also enable the tweak bones, and this will give you more control over the different parts of the body. The downside of using Rigify like this is that if we ever reset the location of these bones, it will reset to the default size, but there is a way to keep all of these changes, and then the rig can be used as normal. With all of your changes made, in object mode, select your character, and we want to apply all of the modifiers and shape keys. We can remove the subdivision modifier because we want to keep the character as low poly as possible. Now if we right click on the character, we can convert it to a mesh. This will apply all of the modifiers and remove all of the shape keys, However, it doesn't remove the vertex groups, so all of our weight painting will still apply to the rig, we just need to make the rig fit the character again. In the outliner, we can show the meta rig for the character, and this should look familiar if you've ever rigged anything. The meta rig is used to build the Rigify rig, so if we fit the meta rig inside the new character model, the Rigify rig will work correctly again. So with the meta rig selected, in edit mode, all we need to do is fit the bones of the meta rig inside the character. This might be as simple as just moving the whole upper body of the character up or down to change the height, or if you made a lot of face changes, you'll need to move these bones so they fit on your character's face. Now in the armature menu, we can go down to the Rigify section and select Regenerate Rig. If you don't see the Rigify menu, just make sure that the Rigify add-on is enabled in the preferences, but I think it's enabled by default. After regenerating, you should now see that the rig fits around the character again. You can now start animating and posing this character with its new face and proportions, and if you ever reset the pose, it will always go back to this state. I didn't design it for animation, but the Rigify rig gives you that option if you'd like. To import the base mesh into another file, you can go to File, Append, then locate the base mesh blender file, open it, and then find the Collections folder and select all of these collections and append them. Now the base mesh will be in the new scene, and we can shift-click the rig and the menus and enter pose mode, and then we can start posing and creating our characters. If you want to see how I use the rig, you can check out my Medusa video where I go through the whole process from start to finish, and you can see how quickly it allows me to create a concept. So I hope the base mesh will help you with creating your own characters, and allow you to get to the fun part a lot more quickly. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.